I told you guys that I would be back with a 2022 beauty favourite, so that is what we are here to do today. Now let me just start by saying this. Choosing these categories wasn't easy. There are some categories where it honestly felt like I was trying to pick a favourite child. However, I think I've managed it. I think I've managed to whittle down my favourite makeup products of 2022. If I was struggling, I tried to see it from a point of view of what I picked up the most. Not necessarily which I prefer out the two, I just... I just had to do what I had to do, okay? <laughs> the way we're gonna do it is category, so like primer, foundation, concealer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you were thinking, what are Jordan's favorite makeup products of the year? Well, well, of last year. <laughs> this is the video for you. So these are the best of the best makeup products, in my opinion, of 2022. Last year was a good year of makeup releases, so I'm excited to see what 2023 brings, but for now, let's cover 2022. Starting strong with the base. I'm all about that base, about that base, no treble. This first product, I'm gonna kind of put it under the category of primer, just because this underneath makeup is skin prep. So good. This is a moisturizer, but I love it. It's like a moisturizing kind of primer to my makeup. It's the Nip and Fab Hydrate Hyaluronic Fix Extreme 4 Hybrid Gel Cream. Longest name to exist, but when I tell you, oh God, mine's are crusty, but when I tell you I absolutely love this stuff, it's lightweight on the skin in terms of texture. So for someone with my skin type, it's perfect. But the hydration behind this product, I think this has four times more hydration than hyaluronic acid on its own. Skincare talk, that's fucking great. You're not gonna get that thick, heavy feeling moisturizer that when you lay makeup on top of it, feels like it just slips and slides, but you are gonna get the hydration that you need. It's beautiful. I don't really see anybody talking about this moisturizer. It's great. I haven't had dry skin since having this, and trust me, it's cold as a bitch outside. <laughs> I don't know why I felt the need to smell that, but it doesn't really smell like anything. Look, look how empty I am, guys. I don't even think you can see, but I'm literally at the bottom. Sensational. Give it a go if you're looking for a new moisturizer. On the topic of hydration, I'm really quickly just going to talk about this, just because I use this again right before I do any of my makeup steps. This lip mask. I mean, you guys know I love a lip mask. A lip mask over anything really. I do like lip oils. A mask just hits different. This is the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, guys. This is one of the best lip masks I have ever used. It is thick, so you get so much hydration, but it isn't sticky. Another thing I love is it has like a really slight baby pink tint. Not anything noticeable. It's not color for the lips, but I just like that slight sort of like veil of baby pink, especially when I'm not wearing makeup. Feels nourishing, but it just looks nice on the lips at the same time. And I don't know what it is about, about this, but when I wear this, people ask me if I've had my lips done again. I haven't. This just makes your lips look juicy and like you've just had the fresh needle, if you know what I mean. Mine's the original. I know they have different flavors, scents. I actually haven't tried any of the others. It has like, the original has like a very slight sweet um, like scent to it. Nothing overwhelming, but you know if you've not had this for like too, too long, but you are charming through it. I, yeah. And this is really cute as well. It comes with like a little spoon and application. <laughs> on to primers. This is probably the best pore filling primer I have used this year and I've tried a few. Two types of primers I like, pore filling and gripping. This one takes the cake when it comes to pore filling. This is She Glam. So this is actually Shein's makeup brand. This year, by the way, I need to do a She Glam makeup review because I'm surprised, let me tell you. She Glam Birthday Skin Primer. There is literally a cover hair in there. Uh, delicious. The texture of this is really interesting. So it's quite thick. As you rub it into the skin though, that kind of melts um, and it kind of turns into like a, like a feeling of a moisturizer, but it just diffuses the pores so beautifully. What I like to do is set it with a bit of translucent powder and trust me, you can see those pores being filled in. My skin in the center has never looked so smooth. My makeup application on top of this is beautiful. I think there's a clear one or like a white one. Mine's the pink one. I don't know if there's a difference between the two. It's She Glam, so it's not expensive either. It is lovely. Try this. Primer number two, I'm gonna let myself have this because it's a completely different texture and a completely different primer. Like I said, I've got two faves. Gripping primer of the year goes to the Beauty Crop We Cherie Gripping Primer. This is actually new. I'm pretty sure this was released in the past month. The fact that it's in this video says a lot, okay? This is one of the most gripping primers I've ever used, but it's such an interesting and unique texture. It's not just gripping. It is ridiculously hydrating. It's weird. You can feel the hydration as you're blending it out. It's just, it's lovely. It's red, but the red color does diffuse out when you blend it in. You know when you do this on the skin? Yeah. You can see the grip of this baby. It's like, it's strong. Essentially, that's gonna make your foundation stick. The products will stick on, therefore it lasts longer. So yeah, this is a fab um, gripping primer. Only downside is the pump, beauty crop babes. Uh, we need to have, like, look how, look, the pump isn't even pumping, okay? Like the pump is, what is that? One centimeter? The pump's not long enough and where the texture of this, do you know what I mean? It just doesn't really work out. Also, it smells very lightly cherry scented. Formulated with cherry extract and hyaluronic acid. Beautiful. Foundations of 2022. This isn't a foundation, but I am absolutely including it in this category because it is like a tint, like a skin tint, either under the foundation to bring the glow through or on its own on like those no makeup makeup days. Say I'm just popping to town or running some errands, whatever. The way this perfects the skin, if this had hands, it'd be around my throat. 
all right? That's how obsessed with this I am. Elf Halo Glow Liquid Filter, and it does just that. I cannot describe it. it tints the skin, so you get that nice, nice color and life back to the skin. It evens out the complexion. Like when I have blemishes, it lightly covers. I'm not gonna say it conceals, but it does lightly even them out. I look fresher. It's super glowy as well. So it's just radiance, radiance, radiance. By the way, mine is in shade medium. I used to have light, but this is a much better color for me. I love the applicator as well, that big sofa. I find it just so easy to use. I don't know what else put in this, but I'll take 20. <laughs> Thank you. 100% something I will be continuing to love in 2023, hands down. Heads up, this is a Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter Dupe. Um, I prefer this over the collection one as well, by the way, if you wanna know the difference between the two. I don't know why, I just do. Never tried Charlotte Tilbury, but I have no intentions to with this. Favorite foundation of last year. Now, nobody judge me for the way that this looks. I'm taking zero responsibility. Be perfect, please adjust the pumps or do something about this foundation. <laughs> Yeah, look at the state of that. Look at the I don't even want to put the lid back on yet because it's that gross. Be Perfect Chroma Cover Foundation. This was hard to pick, by the way, because I've got a few faves, but realistically, this one I use the most. The finish of this is unreal. It's almost like kind of satin matte, but if you put glowier base products on, it looks glowier, more radiant. You can make it look more matte. It's such a versatile foundation for all different like skin types. On top of that, the coverage... I don't have a foundation this full coverage, I'm gonna be honest. It's a full coverage foundation. It's gonna look like makeup, but it doesn't look heavy. It doesn't look cakey. It sits on the skin beautifully. Other pro products, bl product, well, I'm gonna that excited, I can't even speak. Other products sit on top of it beautifully. It is just such an amazing foundation. If you love makeup, if you love full coverage, this will be your shit. I say this like you haven't used it or heard about it. If you haven't, you're welcome. <laughs> you definitely have though. There's a reason why everybody loves this. Um, I just fucking hate the pump. I say that, but I'm pretty sure it's just the formula. It's too thick to go up the pump. So every time I have to do this, it's just messy, which is annoying because the packaging is beautiful. It's like a proper glass bottle, but I feel like it'd be better in like a squeezy tube or a juicier, thicker like tube. I don't know, but yeah, just my favorite foundation and my most loved of last year. It, yeah, it's gotta be HMV. It's gotta be the HMV Cosmetics Soft Focus Airbrush Concealer. A concealer that I will consistently pick up. I always end up coming back to this after even trying new concealers and loving other concealers. A product that I can put in my makeup kit, I can travel with, and I will always be happy with the way that this looks. It works beautifully on top of all types of foundations. It's a gem on its own and it had to be my favorite concealer of the year. Whatever Holly Boone did, <laughs> she did it right. The shade range is amazing as well. It's just one of the best concealers out there. So affordable as well. H&B Cosmetics, you can actually get in boots now, which is wicked. Um, and again, I love the big chunky, chunky applicator. Blends like butter on the skin, looks like butter. And my under eyes just look 10 out of 10 with this. Not much else to say. Uh, when you use it, it does all the talking. Favorite cream contour. Now, if you're all expecting me to hold up the Primark one, you would be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Only reason I'm not talking about that is because you guys just know I love that. And I'm pretty sure I had that in my last yearly favorites. And in 2022, there's been a lot of cream contour releases or ones that have kind of come to the service that people have been loving. So I do have two. Again, they're different textures. So I'm gonna let myself have this one. One's a cream, one's a liquid. Let's start with this one right here. The Beauty Crop Juice Pot Bronze. Now again, this is another relatively new release. The Beauty Crop have been on one, by the way. I, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really get the Beauty Crop hype for a while. They're newer releases. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Packaging is so cute, by the way. When you get it, it comes in like a little kind of carton. It's like plastic kind of carton. It's really cute. Um, and then it is this just mini sort of doe applicator. Essentially a liquid in a, in a pot and it does everything you want your liquid to do. It doesn't blend into nothing. It's got that pigment, but it's not overwhelming. Um, it's a really lovely texture where it kind of just melts into the skin, bronzes up the skin beautifully. And I like how controlled you can be with this as well. I use the shade Almond. The only downside is the shade range isn't the best. I think there's only four. I think they are quite versatile because they do just sort of buff into the skin, but it would be nice to see some new, some new shades, some nice sort of in-between shades. I love having this in my makeup bag. Cream bronzer number two is of course gotta be the Pink Honey BFF Bronzing Face Frosting, which can I just say BFF Bronzing Face Frosting? I never noticed. In case you're curious, Toffee Truffle is my shade, which looks like this. Now the reason, to be honest, one of the main reasons why this is in here, when I tell you that this will last you a ridiculously long time, this will last you a ridiculously long time, even if you use it every single day. 40 grams of product in here, and this is so pigmented, you literally need the smallest amount and it will just completely bronze the skin. Mine looks untouched. <laughs> and I can assure you I've used this a lot. Texturally, it's completely different to the juice pot. Like this is more of like a cream matte bronze. When I say matte though, I'm not saying it like clings or goes disgusting. It just a little bit more, I don't even want to say thick, 
but you know what I'm trying to say, right? I mean, it's a cream contour in a pot like this. Creamy pigmented matte formula. Um, and yeah, everybody raves about this. And when they go in stock, they sell out like this. It's not even expensive, but it's definitely a product that's worth every single penny and more. God, I feel like I need to sip this next one. Cream blush. Where do I fucking start? In 2022, the blush game really come to life for me. So you can understand how difficult this was to pick something. So again, I've allowed myself a couple of different formulas. Don't, don't say anything. This is my channel. <laughs> First one is probably, no surprise, the Made by Mitchell blushes. I understand this is a hyped product, but I'm gonna hold my hands up. I am so part of this hype and I have been for a very long time. In particular though, the pink shades, whether that be this one, which is strawberry cream, sweet cheeks, party pink, cold heart, like those kind of pink tones are my favorite. But the one I'm gonna talk about in this video, I think this is my most used one and I'll tell you why. This one's strawberry cream. Okay, and not only does this make obviously a beautiful baby pink blush, I've been using it underneath the eye, mixed in with my concealer to give that nice like pink under eye, like my pink setting powder, so all together it just works. On the lips, <laughs> baby pink dream is all I can describe this as, right? These as like a lipstick, they're like that nice sort of moussey matte formula. They look velvety on the lips. Lip liner, dab this in the center, blend it in. Beautiful. In the inner corner of the eye for that little pop of baby pink or on the lid, whatever you want to do. Has stole my heart in 2022 and she's going to keep mm, me in 2023. So, I love. And then if you are somebody that likes a more glowy formula of a blush, this one is for you. This is the Doll Beauty Pretty Fly Cream Melt Blushes. To be honest, what they say on the tin, they melt into the skin. So easy to blend out. They're so glowy. You can even use these over powders as well, over powdered skin. If I'm doing that though, I won't kind of go in with a brush straight on the skin. I will grab some, kind of dab it on the back of my hand first, make sure it's even all over the brush and then I'll go in and it's just like, it adds like, it's two in one. It kind of adds blush and glow at the same time. So creamy, so pigmented. This shade by the way is Let's Get Wavy, which is definitely obviously a solid favorite of mine. Beautiful, beautiful um cream cream blush powder i hate to be predictable i really hate to be predictable had a beauty in particular cherry blossom cake i've got two backed up in my drawer that's how much i love this powder more than anything the formula of this powder it is oh my god it's so smoothing blurs the under eye that's where i use this powder because obviously it's got like that pink um tone to it so it's best underneath the eye even another shade though to set the whole skin it gives you that velvety blurred kind of filter finish skin another thing as well which i think is really important for powders is how they last on the skin in terms of touching up i've had some powders where they might look great but when it comes to touching up which is something i typically have to do especially if i've had my makeup on for a long time you go to powder again and it kind of clings and goes weird doesn't allow you to do that this powder allows you to do that. Favorite, favorite powder probably ever. Brightening powder of the year though. You guys know I use powders for different things, okay? So bear with me. I know. You're thinking, what the fuck is that, Jordan? <laughs> when a product looks like this, you know you like it. This is by Body Collection. Uh, I can't even remember what it's called. It's just their pressed powder, I think. This is in the shade Light. You can get this at Wilkinson's. I do also love the Poundland one between the two. The Body Collection, I think, is richer and even more pigmented. They're quite similar, so it just kind of depends on the vibe that you want. But when I want that more full coverage, bright under eye, this is your guy. I think it's one pound, two pounds, something like that. Um, yeah, you cannot complain. Final powder, foundation powder of 2022 goes to my Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. See, now this one was a toss up between this and the Camo Foundation Powder from e.l.f. Fab Drugstore Alternative, by the way. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I've picked this one up more. I think I prefer the, what's the word I'm after? Like the skin tone shades of, of the Fenty. There's more to them because they kind of match the, the foundation. They're more niche, if that makes sense. Like you've got kind of more options. I use shade 250. I mean, I've hit pans, so that's when you know. And mine's actually gone, you know, when like moisture gets into your pan and everything. I don't know what she's been through, but she's still working. She's still great and I still love her. It's a powder foundation, so you get even more coverage. I use this to dust off my bake on my skin. It, it stops anything kind of leaving gray casts on the skin. It brings it back to life. It isn't too heavy, but it does what you need it to do. It is a powder foundation, so you can use it on its own as well. I just love makeup, so I layer, layer this on. Like people say to me, how do you use so many powders in your, in your makeup routine? I use like three. I think people think I look drier than the Sahara, all right? I just look matte and velvety. <laughs> That's how I like mine to look, but this doesn't leave that powdery feeling on the skin. It just melts everything together beautifully. It's like a nice finishing powder on the skin. So yeah, I continue to use this because it's definitely one of my favorite powder foundations and I used it a lot last year. Can I please just have one more, please? She's new and I just can't help but talk about her. It's the Jordana T-shirt, flossy. What do they call this? The bright 
set, bake, and something powder. <laughs> you know their powder duos where you get the pressed powder on top and then you also get the loose on the bottom. How cute are these, first of all? They've come out with like handbag sizes, so perfect to, to chuck in and travel. This is pinker than cherry blossom cake, so when I want that pink under eye, that pink cheek, the pink everything, this is your gal. Okay, it's just the most pink powder that I have. I just really quickly wanted to mention this. Fauna of these are lovely as well. They're really, really smoothing. Again, this is like an under eye powder for me. I had to do it, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right, let's shut up about powder. <laughs> do you know who I'm giving the spot of the favorite bronzer of last year? Ding. We are giving it to Primark, baby. I am a huge fan of Primark makeup, okay? I'm an advocate for it, you guys know this. I love this. The fact that this is a pound blows my mind every single time. The bronze matte bronzing powder. I think this one is the newer packaging, the one with the silver. This one's in the shade Fearless, which is more of my like cool toned bronzer. I think I have one in the shade Sunrise, which is more of my warmer toned bronzer. I love this one. I, I'm wearing this today actually when I'm doing sort of more like cooler tones on the eye like I have today. Cooler toned blushes or whatever, it kind of just chills with that same vibe, you know? You cannot go wrong with this. It is matte, which is my favorite formula. I think it's the most forgiving when it comes to bronzer. Pigmented, um, but it's one of those products if you do apply a little bit too much, it blends out really easily. Everything I want from a bronzer is in this for a pound. It'd be silly of me not to include it in this video. I'm a girl with a lot of makeup, so when I keep kind of coming back to a product, especially on those days where I don't need to test makeup, I just want to get makeup on my face and, you know, use trusty products, this is that product for me. Powder blush, um, expect everything pink. I'm sorry guys, it's just been, it's just been my shit, okay? That, like Kylie Jenner cheek, that's the level I'm on, okay? And speaking of Miss Kylie Jenner, her blush, this is in the shade Winter Kissed. Such a unique blush color, it's that cool toned baby pink blush. Now, actually, cool toned baby pink blush are really really hard to do sometimes they need some type of warmth in there otherwise a they don't show up on the skin or b they just look strange they look too blue the fact that she's managed to pull off like a completely cool tone baby pink blush that shows up on the skin looks beautiful on the skin keep it in mind right this is quite a light blush it's not powdery either it's a matte formula i'm actually wearing this today if you're wondering what blush i'm wearing it's just Miss Kylie Jenner, Miss KJ. My love for this blush went from like here to here in 2022. I get it, I get it. Second favorite powder blush has to go to the new Made by Mitchell pressed blushes. Again, just incredible. I think my two favorite shades are these two, which is Milkshake. Holding this up, just so you can see the comparison between this and the Kylie Jenner one, because you might think they, they are similar. Milkshake kind of has a bit more warmth to it than the, the Kylie Jenner one. The perfect sort of like under eye, like blush. Just kind of dust it onto the skin and it's, oh, it's just, amazing. This is a duo. <laughs> think pink this is called, which by the way, I think this is the powder ver ver version <laughs> of strawberry cream. And then I think this is the powder version of uh, sweet cheeks, if I'm correct. Milkshake is matte, but think pink does have a tiny little bit of shimmer in it, which when I first used it, I wasn't too sure about, but on the skin, you don't even really see it. Let me give them a little swatch so you can see the two, two shades um, kind of side by side. You know, a combo that makes the ultimate pink cheek that's what these two are so i mean they all kind of meet the category of that baby pink cheek i was talking about but it just sort of depends on the tones that i want when you get that balance of like good formula good color what more could you want the best highlighter of 2022 do you know what i wasn't going to put this category in because to be honest with you i didn't know what to say and then i really thought about it i haven't been a powder highlighter kind of girl this year but what i have been is a liquid highlighter kind of girl and the vive skin dew the um, Glow Multitasker. It describes as a universal multitasker for glossy skin. That is 100% the best way to describe this. It's a face gloss. Not only that, but this on the body, like this on the shoulders, on the, you know, those, uh, what do you call these? Science collarbones. <laughs> on its own to give that gloss to the skin or even mix into moisturizer, like on your legs. I think she's actually done like a bigger one of this now because people are that obsessed with it. So the shade is actually quite universal. Once it blends out, it almost looks quite golden and champagne, but once you blend it out, like, look at that. It's just wet. It's just wetness on the skin. If you don't like glittery highlighters, if you don't like highlighters that almost cling to texture on the skin, you know, that just look dry. I can't even describe it. Like, sometimes powder highlighters can look dry. This will never, ever, ever do that. It isn't sticky. You can use it over powdered skin as well. Bloody great is what this is. A little goes a long way. I've had this same tube the whole entire year. Uh, I think I am nearly at the end. That makes me very sad. New one incoming. That kind of wraps up the skin. So let's talk about lip products. When I thought about what my favorite lip liners of last year were, what I reached for the most for, for more lip combos than just one, it's gotta be Dull Beauty. The nude shades that they have are so lovely. I mean, some of my top favorite shades though, by the way, is Talk to the Hand. I'm wearing Talk to the Hand today. It's like a dark brown. I love Run the World. I love Killing It, Boy Bye. There's some just really, really nice. Um, oh, uh, what's the one that's something sass? I can't remember off the top of my head, but that is a beautiful color as well. As a collection of lip liners, they, they go with the most nude color 
lip options, if that makes sense, whether I want something more pinky, whether I want something more beige, darker, lighter, like these just always pull through for me. I love the formula of these. They are creamy, but they're not too soft where they break. They allow you to get that solid line without pulling or dragging. Texturally, they're beautiful. Well done, Del Beauty. <laughs> I think these take top spot on the lipstick category. This was hard because I just use all sorts. There's just too many lip products in the world to just like have one. Do you know what I mean? But I've decided the P. Louise lip bases, they're gonna take top spot. Specifically because of these two shades, to be completely honest with you. These are my two favorites. Baby Doll in particular over the past couple months has just been nonstop on my lips. Perfect baby pink shade, like it's light, like blended into like a darker lip liner. I'm actually wearing the shade today. These are actually like a liquid formula, um, but they dry matte. They're like a really comfortable liquid lipstick formula, but I wouldn't even put them under the category of a liquid lipstick. They're their own category, they're their own kind of formula. Not drying, but they dry matte, they last a super long time as well. I've worn the red lip colours out and they don't even budge. But if I want something more of like that, more, I guess you could say concealer nude, um, you either love or hate that. I personally love it, it's more of that like orangey beige tone. This is, I think this is stark naked. I don't even know at this point because it's completely rubbed out. <laughs> Let me show you baby doll next to it. These smell great by the way. Kind of smell like vanilla -y. Well this one does but I can't smell it on baby doll, I don't think. Hmm, strange. Anyway, that's Dark Naked and that's Baby Doll. That's like my dream nude lip. Two tones I reach for the most, they are just amazing. Of course, I absolutely have to include a gloss for those glossy lip days. Two favorites. One actually technically is a lip oil, not a gloss, but I'll start with the gloss first. This is, I'm hoping you can still get hold of this. I did hear something about it being discontinued. I really hope it's not, because this is one of the best baby pink glosses ever to exist. It's the Be Perfect Double Glazed Gloss in the shade Starkers. When I tell you, every single time I wear this, people ask me what is on my lips. I'm actually pretty fussy when it comes to colored glosses, um, just because a lot of the time I like the actual lipstick color I put on and I don't want to completely conceal that with a gloss, right? This one, however, <laughs> I will happily apply this to every nude lip combo ever. It's one of those glosses as well that you can just go in with lip liner and then apply this because it's obviously it's got pigment to it. I love it like right in the center here. Not sticky. I mean, it is baby pink, but it's just one of the nicest like nude glosses ever. I would actually go as far as saying this is my favorite nude gloss that I own. And then if you are somebody that likes wearing products that do something they help at the same time, you know, like wearing like skincare as makeup almost, or then a lip oil is the way forward in terms of a gloss, right? Trigwell Cosmetics lip oil, specifically this one, which is the grape one. Oh my God. <laughs> and the watermelon one. They're my two favorites. There's four. I think there's coconut, watermelon, grape, and another one. Mango, I think it is. They all smell great, but I always reach for this one. I also love the applicator. I love how big that is. These feel almost like water on the lips. It's a lip oil, right? So obviously on their own, they're amazing for hydration, but these are so shiny and lightweight. These is a gloss. I know in the tube it looks purple. It doesn't go on like that, by the way. <laughs> Don't be scared. They smell great. So they kind of like taste great. <laughs> on those days where I just want something to just make the lips look glossy, something easy, something simple. Or you know those days where you try to do a matte lip but your lips are too dry for it. <laughs> These are amazing. Last categories, we're on to kind of eye related products now. The Beauty Bay Nude 42 Color Eyeshadow Palette. I actually used this today for the makeup. I'm wearing. Basically, this has everything I need. There is mattes, there are shimmers, lighter shades, darker shades. My main thing I like about this is it includes these really, really cool tone shades down here. Almost those like gray blues. And I think what I like about this as well is this comes in all different forms. Bigger palettes, smaller palettes, a beauty bay, so they are super affordable at the same time. In fact, let me swatch some of these shades for you just so you can see what I'm talking about. I also love the huge mirror, so this is great when traveling. Um... There we go. They're more of like a metallic-y shimmer sheen to them as opposed to like a glittery intense shimmer in this palette. They do have palettes though where their glitters are actually out of this world. These ones are a bit more, I don't wanna say muted, they're just more like metallic-y. Here's some of the mattes. I'll swatch the black as well, just so you can you can see, but look at the mattes. The mattes are definitely my favorite. Obviously had to just include that palette, but I also have to include the Jordana T-shirt Nude Divinity Eyeshadow Palette. I call this, right, the Soft Glam palette of dreams. That matte soft glam, this is 100% that palette that you need. The Instagram looks, you know the Instagram like model looks? Mine's well loved and I've said this before but I'm genuinely surprised I've not hit pan with this palette because I mean I use this for my like winged liner when I want to do like shadow wing liner. Even on my brows for brow powder I use this. I know it's shadow but I even use it as like um like a matte lip topper as well. Yeah it's, it's just amazing. It's worth every single penny. I think I'm part of a big group of people when I say that we use this the most. Hi! You wanna come join in? <laughs>
okay i love you i know they're both neutrals but that's just the main shit that i was on in 2022 it was this or pinks which i am being more creative in 2023 okay i just yeah <laughs> my most used lashes of 2023 i'm going to show you like my more sort of like natural half lash scenario and then i'm going to talk about my full lash unicorn cosmetics unicorn wings lashes and unicorn storm i just don't have a physical pair here because I've used them. These are amazing, right? They are like subtle enough that they kind of don't overload a look, but they're enough that they bring the look to life. Do you know what I mean? They're just the perfect kind of fluttery, soft glam lash. Unicorn Cosmetics as well is so affordable. These honestly are so amazing. I need to top up on more of these. That's how much I love these. Like these were, oh, these are a go-to lash for me. I can always rely on them. They always just look so pretty. That's the best way to describe them. And then I need to give a shout out to my Lulu Bells lash in the style Katie. When I want a full winged out fluffy lash, you know them occasions when you want a lash? This is my absolute favorite. A cat eye lash is my favorite type of shape anyway. I just think they suit my eye the most. And these ones, I mean, I kind of cut off maybe two or three from the outer corner just to fit my eye and to give me more of that like kind of cat eye appearance even more so. But these are honestly so beautiful. They are so layered, so fluffy. I mean, I can't really show you, but if I kind of lean them to the side, you can hopefully see the fluff and the curl on the lash. Curl and that like volume from the side, like they just... Oh, they're so good. <laughs> I think I've used them a lot that people will be like, Kate, it's Katie Lash, isn't it? That's the one you're using today. <laughs> like when I'm on TikTok Live, you guys like Katie Lash? <laughs> Apologies if the uh, the angle has changed. Just had to flip over the battery. I've clearly been speaking a lot. <laughs> we are almost at the end, okay? I just want to talk about a mascara real quick. Now, when I was thinking about this, I wasn't even going to even consider a mascara. I'm a lash kind of girl. Mascara's at meh, whatever. I'm also a big believer if you want a good mascara, just go to the drugstore. You don't have to spend a lot for a good mascara. However, this for your bottom lashes, it is just the best. In 2022, I actually become a bottom lashes kind of girl. Who am I? Like I used to hate it, do you remember? I never used to think bottom lashes suited me. I always think I look crazy. And now I struggle to not put this on. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Anyway, this mascara, right? This is the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash Mascara. We've got a friend joining us. Joining the girlies. Oh, he's joining the girlies. Strictly for my bottom lashes. And I'm not kidding, okay, when I say, people ask me if I'm wearing bottom eyelashes when I wear this. The brush, the formula, like the combination of the two, it's nice and thin as well, so you can really get all up in there. Only thing I do wish is that it was smaller, but then again, it isn't actually a bottom lash mascara, that's just what I use it for. Most importantly, this doesn't flake off, it doesn't smudge underneath the eye as well. This is quite a common area to do that, your bottom lashes. Is this waterproof? I don't even know if it is. I don't think it is. It isn't difficult to get off. So worth it. Mine is so crusty now, look, like it's so dry, you can't even like hear it anymore. <laughs> Definitely need to get myself a new one for 2023. Guys, I almost forgot brows. How dare I? You know my brow routine at this point. You know what I love, but I couldn't not mention this because every time I tell someone about this, I literally say, I will personally give you your money back if you don't like this. Like that's how much I rely on this product and I know this shit works. Like that's how much trust I have in this. The NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen. I use the shade, um, Oh, espresso hair. If you are somebody that struggles with either volume in your brows in terms of the hair, you like that more sort of like hair-like brow, this, provides the best brow-like hair strokes ever. It's such like a fine nib that it just creates the perfect hair-like strokes. Yeah, it's just the best. And also what I like about it is you, you get the control of like a darker hair, a lighter hair. You can just make your brows look super, super realistic with this. I say this with chest, this is the best brow pen out there. People say to me, have you tried the Anastasia Beverly Hills one? Or have you tried the whatever one? I'm like, is it the best? This is the best. Next. And then last, but by no means least, setting spray. I think somebody else likes shit, don't we? This was between two. It's both from the same brand. It's from the Beauty Crop. The one that I have here is the We Cherie Hydrating Dual Phase Setting Mist. This or the Glow Milk. They're both incredible. Basically what they do is they melt the complexion together. In fact, I'm actually going to call these more of like a finishing spray as opposed to a setting spray. I think I pick up this one a little bit more because it says that it's suitable for oily skin. Anything that says that, I'm like... Thanks. <laughs> it's enriched with cherry extract and hyaluronic acid. So it's basically a hydrating mist for the skin. It kind of freshens up the makeup, adds a little bit of a glow. Like I said, melts all the complexion together. It just is a really, really lovely finishing spray. It also smells so lovely. It has like a bit of, a bit of like a, like a cherry hint to it. Let me spray over here, just away from Cokes, but it's so fresh. Were you just trying to eat it? <laughs> Stop it. Like a really super, super fine mist on the skin. Like it doesn't drown you. Yeah, it's lovely. This We Cherie range, can you tell I like it? And that everybody is my 2022 makeup beauty favorites. The best of the best. <laughs> products that I rely on, products that I trust and ones that just 
stay on the brain. That is all folks. Um, and I'm excited to see what makeup goodies we discover that we find and what kind of makeup journey we go on in 2023. You better stick around for it. Love you. <laughs>